The Sultans of Swag have returned with their first album in seven years, and is it a bold record or does it serve as an italic type? Let's do this review before my puns become an affront to the fans. Yeah, that last one was a bit sh**. Hi people, and hello my Chili Con Carnage crew, it's Chili here for a 5 minute review on Queens of the Stone Age newest album, In Times New Roman. And this record is the band's 8th outing, and features the same members since Like Clockwork, and 3 singles were released in anticipation for this one. Those songs were Emotion Sickness, Carnivoya, and the late edition of Paper Machete, released the day before the album, and I feel that this is the perfect amount of singles to drop in order to build up anticipation for your record. It seems more often than not, bands will release half of their album as singles before its release, and that just gives me the shits. I've seen strippers give less exposure to sell their product, so take note musicians. It's about the illusion of what's in store, rather than what's on offer, because once that horse is bolted, good luck stopping it. So dumb points aside, the band released the perfect amount of singles, and let's start with these three songs. Emotion Sickness. What a song. It's a hell of a way to signal your return. Also, thank you Queens of the Stone Age for checking out my short video I made about you regarding this song. It brought me great joy seeing that comment. More so than the day I got married. Kick-ass tune. The next single was Carnivoya, and it's perhaps my favourite song from the album. The slow waltz of this tune really fits its lyrical narrative that discusses a few philosophical ideas of existentialism, and the line that there is nothing I can do but smile really rings a note when it's sung by Josh. And the audio distortion at the end really suits the outro well, as it goes out with a bang. The last single was Paper Machete, and reminds me a lot of Lullabies the Paralyzed era stuff with their stiff riffs that suit the band so well. And is yet again another kick-ass tune. Speaking of solid tracks, the last song Straight Jacket Fitting is worth its weight in gold, and is a fantastic way to close the album with the longest track quotes are put to record, lasting at nearly 10 minutes. What is it with awesome bands writing these badass long songs? First we had Foo Fighters with The Teacher, and now it's this one. There are a few references to other songs within the lyrics of this tune, and I want you to comment below which lines you found to reference what. It's such a beautiful way to bring about the end of this record. Also, the acoustic section reminder kind of reminds me of the Mosquito song. But not all of this record is brilliant, and one track I found to be rather quirky was Time and a Place, with its staccato guitar riff to the tune of a grandfather clock chime. It's a shame because it's a decent song, but that riff's repetition just gets to me every time I hear that song. Other than that, it's a pretty solid album, and that's the only grief I've had with this record. One small minor section in one track from an album with 10 songs lasting 47 minutes. Other songs Songs on here have hints of tunes that feel like their old robot rock mantra, like on the opener track Obscenery, and then their high energy dancing rockabilly on What The People Say, to their slow and darkly atmospheric tune Made To Parade. This record has been released during a tumultuous time in Joshua Homme's life, with a less than amicable divorce and custody battle with ex-wife Brody regarding his kids. By the way, quotes of fans, you should see my review on Rancid, because I think you'll like it. If you weren't aware, Tim Armstrong from Rancid hates Australia because Brody left him for Josh. So for my review on the Rancid album, I just talked about Queens of the Stone Age for the entire review pretty much. The other battle Josh faced during the recording was his battle with cancer, which he is still overcoming. But from what I've read, he had a successful surgery to help him. Given these obstacles that life has thrown at him, I think this record serves both as an outlet and as a testament to his character, with his quick wit and sense of humour. There is lots of wordplay within the song titles, as can be seen with tracks like Paper Machete, Carnivoya, and What the People Say. The lyrics are ambiguous enough at times to lead you to interpret them to yourselves, and in other points they are a voice of the times we currently face. I didn't want to put a review out immediately, as I knew from past experiences that any quotes or album takes a little bit of time for me to soak up and thoroughly enjoy. And this record feels no different. My initial playthrough was enjoyable, but the subsequent seven were really better, and I feel that this is only going to grow on me more over time. Overall, I would score this album at 10.5 million chilies on the spicy scale, with my favourite songs being pretty much the whole album except for Time and a Place. 
Well, this record marks the highest score I've given a new release, even higher than the new Foo Fighters album, and with a score that is set amongst a higher than normal setting. If you like this review and want to see more quotes and material, then make sure to check out my ranking of all the Queens of the Stone Age albums, and the link to that will be below. And as always people, you have a great day, make sure to stay spicy, do the subs if you can, like this channel, subscribe to us, and have a great day, stay spicy. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Live Listen Erased. And if you have enjoyed this episode, make sure you share it with all your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our Chili Con Carnage crew so you can get notified for all the future videos that we put out, as we put out videos every Friday. Also, we are on Discord, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter over at Live Listen Erased, so make sure to tune in over there. And don't forget to like this video so that our manager can stay very happy.